Hey, I'm Ethan Bortnick, and I'm hanging out here with Rob on Front Row Live. Ethan, what's up, dude? I recently caught wind of you through TikTok, and I was like obsessed with watching your stuff. Um, and I'm super excited to be talking to you about your new single, Engravings, because the TikTok alone wasn't giving it justice. Like the TikTok alone was like driving me nuts because of the way you were playing. But actually listening to the song, it's just even, I don't know, my mind blew even more than it was already. <laughs> oh, thank you, Rob. <laughs> so congratulations with the new track. Um, but I want to dive in and talk about that creative process of this song. And just because like it's your your piano playing is obviously so intense and your your songwriting as well. So like what is that balance and how do you really start working on music when you start creating a new song? Yeah, it's it really depends. You know, like I I truly don't really start the same way every single time but it kind of ends up the same way every time. So I don't know, it, it, I think it just lends itself because I am a piano player first and that is my, you know, that, that is my instrument, you know, even though I sing and I, I write, um, you know, everything stems from here. Um, so really with, with, with engravings, um, it started with a conversation. Um, you know, I have um, my main collabor collaborator, his name is Dylan. Uh, we kind of, produce everything together. Um, and so we kind of sat down in this room, uh, like around November, December, and we were talking um, about stuff. Uh, we were just riffing and he, um, you know, I, I kind of had this idea um, to do a song based on the very uh, back and forth nature of my toxic relationship that I went through. Um, and sort of how a lot of people don't realize that that relationship, that kind of relationship can be very addicting. Um, and even though it's a bad thing, you don't realize it. And so that's kind of where engravings came from. And I just sat down at the piano right after we conversed and I just started playing and he hit, hit record. And that that's really the opening to the song. Um, and so from there, we just kind of started writing and you know, I, I knew I wanted it to be a banger. So I just kind of started doing this and I put a four on the floor and we just started producing it. And before you knew it, we had a song within, you know, four hours and, um, and that was it. And engravings was born. Would you say that that, that initial, like that intro to the song with the piano, would you say that that's what kind of dictated the cadence that you were going to have with, with your verses as well throughout the song? Yeah, it was sort of, you know, I wanted to really display like just how, you know, chaotic the relationship was um, and sort of, you know, because it would be the highs in a toxic relationship are very high and the lows are very low. And I wanted to kind of capture that, um, you know, it, not only in the, the songwriting and the lyrics, but also in the composition and the arrangement. And so, you know, when you listen to engravings, you know, the, the verses are very mean and sort of, you know, really aggressive. And, and so are the, you know, the, uh, you know, the riffs and the, the, the little interludes. Um, but the chorus starts aggressive and then kind of mellows out and is a little bit more pretty and, and kind of angelic, I guess. And so I, I really wanted to capture that not only, you know, in the songwriting, but also in the in the composition and the production so yeah and as far as that composition like i loved how how intense the piano was and how intense the lyrics were but how soft your voice was during during most of the singing um how did you go about that was this something that you instantly had that in mind to do or is this something that took a little bit of trial and error during the recording or even the writing session to to get to the point to what we hear today yeah generally speaking about 20 minutes after i finished writing the song I know exactly how it's going to sound production wise. I know what the mix is going to yeah. sound like. I know what the vocal delivery is going to sound like. I know what the art is going to look like. I know what the music video will eventually look like. I know what the visualizer, the lyric video, everything's in here. Um, and it kind of just immediately comes out and I don't know how to stop it, but I don't want to because, um, you know, for me that 
I don't know it it even though I sometimes feel like I'm very controlling about a lot of different aspects of of my artistry um it is always going to be genuinely me and what I envision so so yeah and at the same time, because you and Dylan Edmonds have been working together for so so long already with every track that you've kind of released, um, how do you guys, how are you guys able to try something new every time instead of just being in that comfort level every single time that you guys create? Yeah, it's, um, I don't know how to describe the, 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 the energy in the room every time that we make music, but whatever comes out is exactly the the kind of energy that, that that we have when we write it's just bonkers balls to the wall we're not afraid to say anything like it's we 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 go through a million different personalities and and accents and and jokes in like a span of 20 minutes you know we really we never want to we never want to be comfortable because um you know, it's it's very easy for me to just fall and do the same thing on that thing every single time. And um, with engravings, that was kind of my worry. I, I, I didn't want it to sound like the other, quote, piano songs that I have. Um, and that's kind of where the more poppy dance beat came from, um, as opposed to grabbing sort of more of the, the more hip hop leaning stuff that I, you know, either have in the works or have done. Um, so that's, that's kind of where that came from. And then, um, you know, it's songwriting wise, we try not to stick to the same topic over and over again and try and really find unique ways to kind of describe a narrative or, you know, um, I guess paint, paint, paint a different picture each time. Um, so because the piano is so intense, how do you not fall in the trap of like also having intense or like uh like fast verses or fast almost rapping at the same time yeah well i think i think part of why i love what i do and why i'm so grateful that i have this instrument is because um that's really my form of singing and when you hear you know obviously i sing but when you hear the music you'll hear a lot of call and answer from my voice and from the the piano and that's yeah. just because it's it it's natural for me and it's just how I've always been and you know I try and make sure that I'm never competing with this and it's almost like you know a nice harmonious dance you know like um I never want to it's also why the drums I try and keep very simple a lot of times because that's also kind of my percussive instrument as well. Um, so, you know, it's, I try and really balance everything. And, you know, if there's a song out there that has less piano, then you'll probably hear more rhythmic stuff in the drums or my voice or something of that nature. So, you know, I try and switch it up, but anytime that there's a track like this, like engravings, um, that's, that's usually why that's the case. Do you feel more vulnerable when the piano is not as as uh, prominent as it is on this song? Actually, I think I feel more vulnerable with the piano because really? because I think I let myself go so much mm. to the point where I don't even I, I don't even um, I guess I guess maybe maybe I feel more insecure without the piano, but. I would say I feel more vulnerable and more intimate when I have the piano, because that's really when you get to see purely a hundred percent me because I'm just like lost, lost in it. So, so does that also include uh, the lyrics and the topics that you talk about? Do you feel like you open up more when the piano is there? Interesting. I think so. Um, I think I, I think when, when I songwrite without being at the piano, it almost feels wrong. <laughs> like it feels like I'm cheating or something. Sorry, no, no offense. Um, but, but yeah, I, 
I think I, I definitely, but really, I, I think the the main thing is that I have, fe- I've, I've formed such a great relationship with Dylan um, uh, that that has really allowed me to be completely honest um, in my songwriting, which, you know, took me a lot of years to learn um, and kind of, I'm still learning how to be incredibly honest. And I think that's really the most, I think, I think that's my goal as a songwriter to be the most honest and, um, and to observe in the most real way that I possibly can, because th- those are the songwriters that I look up to the most, the, you know, the, the songwriters that can not only paint such a beautiful picture, but mostly are the most real and honest, um, not only with themselves, but in general. So with, with this song in particular, where do you feel like you felt challenged the most? Oof, probably. So Dylan and I have something called a bro test, which is essentially don't give the secret away. This is real. This is top <laughs> secret shit. Anyways. Um, yeah, this, this is off camera. <laughs> Um, no. So basically it's a bro test and we want to impress the bro at the club, um, that has, you know, maybe one drink in hand, but the rest of the time doesn't know how to dance, but he does know how to do this, which is why you saw me do this earlier. If we can get that guy on the dance floor, like doing this the whole time, we're set. So that's that was really the challenge was getting uh, a song that was as dynamic as engravings, but also not losing, you know, the bro at the club. That that was the challenge. So did you bring a bro actually into the studio? <laughs> well, see, you need to channel the bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we actually did. I, I brought I brought some some people who have that kind of energy and played the song. <laughs> And that was, and that was a great thing because I noticed during the choruses, we lost them. And I was like, okay, great. I know what I need to do now. And that was it. And then, and then we kind of tweaked the choruses. (laughs) That's a completely new way. I've, I've done tons of interviews about the creative process and that's definitely a new way. So (laughs) it is possible that no matter how much new music is out there, there's always a new way to record. Absolutely. You just got, you just got to go to some <laughs> random club and find a dude who's, you know, not, he doesn't really dance, but he does this and you'll be set. <laughs> now, vocally for you with this track, where do you feel like you challenged yourself? Uh, did you feel like this lower tone of a voice was more challenging for you to control while you're having this tone in the piano? Or did you feel like this was a lot easier for you? I think. I think the main thing that I wanted to convey with my voice was um, just how done I was with um, <laughs> with everything. Um, but I also wanted to, you know, in the in the choruses, portray a lot of emotion and get as much like I, I I actually told Dylan that I I wanted to feel I wanted it to feel like almost like I was on the verge of tears towards the end where I'm saying the words like please tell me everything um, and uh, during the verses I just wanted to feel like I was dead dead completely dead inside so um, you know it was it was mostly a challenge I think getting that emotion out during the choruses because it had been some time since I had been in that space. Um, so I really wanted to almost go back, go back there and, uh, you know, feel that. How do you not exhaust yourself during the recording process of this? Cause I, I mean, this entire song is intense, the back and forth as a listener, it like wears me out, but you as the artist recording all of this, like, how do you keep it together through this process? I don't, <laughs> I don't keep it together. And that's what scares me because one, I, once I get on the stage, I'm genuinely yep. afraid I'm going to break <laughs> some bones. And um, that's, 
you know, that I'll, I'll learn how to manage it. But, um, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I live and breathe music. And when it comes to just being, you know, recording and making this generally, I, you know, I haven't had writer's block in so long. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because I took such a long break from writing to uh, finish high school, <laughs> but, um, but honestly, like it, it, it just, it, since then, and I'm trying not to jinx it, but since then it's just literally it, it's, I've, I've been throwing up music and I can't stop and I don't want it to stop because I just love creating. And I, you know, it, I ne like, even when we have moments where we're trying to really think or come up with a lyric or find a certain sound or, or, you know, I'm, I'm just in the zone and that can hurt my sleep schedule sometimes. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Um, I'm curious, like, what do you listen to outside of, of this music? Just because this is so different. You can't, it's not a genre that's like so actively out there. Like you're definitely one in a million. So like, what do you listen to outside of your music? I mean, I don't want to be boring and say everything because everybody says everything. You have to have a favorite. <laughs> I mean, it's tough because, you know, I grew up playing classical music, right? Mm -hmm. I was classically trained. Um, then I went into the jazz world and I, you know, immersed myself in playing trios and big band and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I grew up listening to, as you can imagine, a lot of Billy Joel and Elton John and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I, I even got to um, work with them and perform with them in some instances. And, um, you know, as as I kind of grew up, you know, I, I picked up various things and genres and stuff like that. And now, you know, here I am and I became one of the biggest music nerds ever. And I listen to generally genuinely everything. And my my friends play a game where they'll send me obscure music and see if I don't know it and they genuinely have a tough time because I have photographic memory so I remember every single cover art every single you know artist um but if I had to pinpoint my biggest influences or people that artists that I you know that that have kind of that I kind of look up to um I would say Kendrick Lamar is number one. Um, I think his artistry, his honesty, and his sort of um, vision is unlike anybody um, I've ever seen. And I would say it's obviously a tie between Elliot Smith and Phoebe Bridgers as my favorite songwriters. Um, and I love, I love Tyler the Creator's authenticity. Um, my favorite classical composer is probably Chopin. Um, and what else? Uh, my favorite pianist of all time is probably Bill Evans. Um, and ooh, what else can I give you? Uh, and my, fa my favorite, my favorite uh, producer um, has to, or just, uh, I guess, uh, instrument or instrumentalist producer, electronic music, probably Aphex Twin. Um, and then uh, my favorite band has to be either Nirvana or Deftones. Yeah. I was getting worried. I was like, he hasn't mentioned any band. So, <laughs> 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 cause, cause I get, you know, you sound like you're well-rounded when you listen to your music. So, and I get this, like these elements of the hip hop when you're doing the fast keys and I get these elements of pop and I also get these elements of like rock in a sense. So I was like, yeah. if he doesn't say a rock band, like I've, that that's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it, it goes all over the place. Like, you know, yeah. I obviously, you know, I, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, I get a lot of comparisons to Muse because they're very like classical oriented. So I obviously love Muse, um, but, you know, bands wise, like, oh my God, I, I love, you know, everything from Smashing Pumpkins to, you know, Deftones is a huge one. Um, Obviously, 
you know, I will always be a huge Beatles fan. You know, I, I can't help that. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's tough. I, I, I just, I love, and I live and breathe music and it's tough to just like pinpoint one thing that I love the most. So. Well, it's cool that you're creating your own lane. Uh, and like I said earlier, like it's, it's hard to kind of pinpoint you in a certain direction. And I, I also hate that. I hate that whole genre deal, but like, it's cool that you're something new, you're something fresh. Um, uh, I feel like we get used to listening to the same kind of vocal tones or the same kind of techniques over and over again, and you're giving us something fresh. So that's, that's amazing. Um, now, lastly, because I discovered, or bef because I found you through TikTok, how important has TikTok been to your music artist, um, your music, your music in general? Like, do you feel like it's impacted you a lot uh, in order to get to where you're at today? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I used to be, I used to be the guy that was like, TikTok is just a dancing app and, you know, uh, it's just like silly memes and, and whatnot. That was about early 2020. Um, so you were the bro. I was the bro. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily, I'm not the, the club type, but I definitely was the bro. Um, and of course I have no dance moves cause I sit for a living, but, <laughs> um, which I'll work on one day, but, uh, I around, around mid 2020, that very much changed as I saw a lot of, um, really incredible artists, um, not only just blow up, but, you know, release content and make content. Um, you know, big one was, uh, was blue to tiger on bass. Incredible. Um, so that was really around the time where I was kind of seeing or warming up to TikTok. And then I had a little bit of virality um, uh, in, the, in that during that summer where, you know, I kind of told my 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 story, um, you know, how I got started in music and um, the fact that I had really restarted my entire career um, just to start making music that I, I'm really proud of and uh, and music that's very much me. And uh, around that time is where I started really taking it seriously. And then I stopped to finish high school. As soon as I came back um, after finishing high school, going through that crazy toxic relationship that I had gone through, um, I sat down really focused. And that's when really the first song, Cut My Fingers Off, blew up. And that's really when everything started. Um, you know, that was really the, the start of, you know, meeting Columbia, uh, signing that deal, um, and starting to see people actually liking the, the weird stuff that I do with my piano and my voice and everything. And, and that's really when I also gained some sort of confidence in what I was doing because Cut My Fingers Off specifically was a song about feel about imposter syndrome and feeling like what I make and what I do will never be good enough. Um, and no matter how much that I love it, I don't know if other people will like it. And that, and that, and that affects me. And so I would say that TikTok not only has allowed me to, you know, reach an audience that certainly I wouldn't be able to, if it wasn't for the platform, um, especially since it's so visual and people can really see and experience what I do with the piano. Cause it's one thing when you listen to it, but it's another thing when you actually experience it. And then it's another thing when you see it live in concert, but, um, you know, it's also allowed me to gain confidence in, in the music and, and the style that I'm sort of making. And, um, you know, it, it, it's and it's exciting too because you know TikTok is like we've never had this ability to be like hey do you guys want this song if not okay what about this one what about this one oh you like this song here you go it's incredible we've never had that and I think it's it's such a beautiful way to connect with an audience not only your audience but you know, an audience even wider than that. So, right. Right. 
That's amazing. Well, I've, I've been super excited about this platform just because it helped me discover a lot of new stuff, a lot of great new stuff. So you're one of them and I'm super excited about that. So, uh, Thank you, Ethan, Rob. thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. Congratulations with engravings. Congratulations with the signing and your success. You. And I'm sure we're going to do this again sometime soon. So uh, thank you again. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it.